Each element has its own story of origin and movement through the ecosystem, known as biogeochemical cycles. In general, the source of these essential nutrients is either the atmosphere or rocks and minerals. Once in the soil or water, the nutrients are taken up by plants and then moved through the food chain. Nutrients in organic form stored in living tissues represent a significant proportion of nutrients within ecosystems. As these living tissues senesce, the nutrients are returned to the soil or sediments in the form of dead organic matter, where they make their way through the decomposer food chain. But unlike carbon, most of the nutrients are recycled within the ecosystem. Various microbial decomposers transform the organic nutrients into a mineral form, and the nutrients are once again available to the plants for uptake and incorporation into new tissues. This process, called nutrient cycling, is an essential feature of all ecosystems. It represents a recycling of nutrients within the ecosystem. Nitrogen is one of the most important constituents of all living organisms from bacteria to men. Animals obtain a large amount of nitrogen by eating plants and other animals. However, Plants obtain nitrogen from either the soil or air. Air has large amount of nitrogen in its elemental form, but plants cannot use nitrogen in its elemental form, so nitrogen should be converted to nitrogen-containing compounds such as ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates in order to be used by the plants. Some blue-green algae present in the bacteria can fix the atmospheric nitrogen into their protoplasm. This organism converts the atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. After converting this into other organic substances, plants utilize them for growth. When animals eat these plants, the substances enter into the animal body. When these animals or plants decompose by the bacteria, Nitrogen is released back into the atmosphere. As plant tissue sinus, nutrients are returned to the soil surface in the form of dead organic matter. However, before senescence occurs, plants absorb some of the nutrients from senescing tissues into the perennial parts of the plant to be stored and used in producing new tissues. This process of recycling nutrients within the plant is called retranslocation or reabsorption. Once on the forest floor, various decomposer organisms break down and consume the dead plant tissues, transforming the organic nutrients into a mineral form through the process of mineralization. The cycle is now complete and the nutrients are once again available to the plants for uptake and incorporation into plant tissues. Decomposition is the key process in the recycling of nutrients within ecosystems. It is a complex of many processes including leaching, fragmentation, changes in physical and chemical structure, ingestion, and excretion of waste products. These processes are accomplished by a variety of decomposer organisms. The innumerable organisms involved in decomposition are categorized into several major groups based on their size and function. Bacteria are the dominant decomposers of dead animal matter, whereas fungi are the major decomposers of plant material. Fungi extend their hyphae into the organic material to withdraw nutrients. Bacteria and fungi secrete enzymes into plant and animal tissues to break down the complex organic compounds. Microfauna and Microflora this include protozoans and nematodes inhabiting the water in soil pores, bacteria, and fungi. Mesofauna. This include mites, potworms, and springtails that live in soil air spaces. Megafauna. These are represented by millipedes, earthworms, and snails in terrestrial habitats, and by annelid worms, smaller crustaceans, mollusks, and crabs in aquatic habitats. Earthworms and snails dominate the megafauna. The macrofauna and megafauna can burrow into the soil or substrate to create their own space, and megafauna, such as earthworms, have major influences on soil structure. 
These detrivores feed on plant and animal remains and on fecal material. Ecologists study the process of decomposition by designing experiments that follow the decay of dead plant and animal tissues through time. The most widely used approach is the use of litter bags to examine the decomposition of dead animal tissues. Litter bags are mesh bags constructed of synthetic material that does not readily decompose. The holes in the bag must be large enough to allow decomposer organisms to enter and feed on the litter but small enough to prevent decomposing plant material from falling out of the bag. A fixed amount of dead organic matter is placed in mesh bags. Bags are retrieved at various intervals and the mass loss as a result of consumption by decomposers is tracked through time. The mass of litter remaining in the bags is expected to decrease continuously as time progresses. During leaf decomposition, microbes break through the leaf cuticle and traverse the interstitial space on their way to the cell wall. Microbes find food by releasing a small number of enzymes that break down complex compounds like cellulose into simpler ones such as glucose that can be consumed. An increase in the concentration of this simple compound tells the microbes to produce more than the needed enzyme for more release link. The three main constructed components that microbes break down are cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Microbes attack this high-energy food, cellulose, and hemicellulose. Lignin is a low-energy food which shields cellulose and hemicellulose. Microbes only attack lignin as a last resort to get the protected high-energy food. There are two methods enzymes used to break large complex compounds, simpler, smaller ones to take and eat. One is the lock and key method used to break down cellulose and hemicellulose molecules which are chains of sugar into single sugars that can be consumed. In this process, the enzyme is the key. The key fits the lock in the substrate molecule and causes upbreak in the chain. Some enzymes use this method to break a long chain in the middle to create shorter chains. Other enzymes clip off the ends to release individual sugars. Typically, multiple enzymes are packaged together in complex scaffold. The scaffold organizes the enzyme that break bonds on both the ends and the center of the chain. To completely break down the chain, the scaffold slides up and down the chain and takes it apart. The other way enzymes break down the complex compound is by oxidation. This process is used to break down lignans. Lignin has a random structure. The molecule is different so the lock and key method does not work. Also, it takes a lot of energy to break down lignin, a very stable molecule. Because of this enzyme, do not have enough energy to attack lignin directly. Instead, enzymes attack other molecules that create free radicals, a highly reactive compound. These free radicals then react with the lignin and break it down. Once the lignin is removed in this way, the cellulose and hemicellulose that was encased by the lignin is available for decomposition. As microbes consume this food, they are releasing carbon dioxide through a process of respiration. Scientists need to understand how leaves decay and what influences how fast this process occurs that they can predict how much carbon dioxide will be produced during decomposition. The major nutrients that these microbes put into the soil is nitrogen. Plants are unable to receive nitrogen from the air. So how do microbes deliver these key nutrients to plants? Let's consider a simple example. Application of fertilizers containing mineral nitrogen is ammonium and nitrate. Organic fertilizers contain mostly complex forms of nitrogen and ammonium. Uptake of nitrate is rapid due to the high particle mobility. Most plants, therefore, prefer nitrate over ammonium. Uptake of ammonium is slower than that of nitrate. Ammonium is bound to clay particles in the soil and roots have to reach it. Most of the ammonium is therefore nitrified before it is taken up by plants. Nitrification by soil bacteria converts ammonium into nitrate in between a few days and a few weeks. Nitrous oxide and nitric oxide are lost to the atmosphere during the process. 
the nitrification is favored by lack of oxygen or water logging. Soil bacteria convert nitrate and nitrite into gaseous nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, and nitrogen. These are lost to the atmosphere. Immobilization transforms mineral nitrogen into soil organic matter. Activity of soil microbes is mainly stimulated by ammonium. Immobilized nitrogen is not immediately available for plant uptake but needs to be mineralized first. Mineralization of soil organic matter and manure releases ammonium into the soil. Ammonia volatilization occurs when ammonium is converted to ammonia and lost to the atmosphere. A high soil pH level and temperature favor conversion of ammonium to ammonia. If conversion takes place at the soil surface, losses are highest. Leaching of nitrate occurs mainly during winter and fallow periods when percolating rainfall washes residual and mineralized nitrates below the root zone. Accurate fertilization increases nitrogen use efficiency and reduces the risk of leaching during the growth period and afterwards. The composition in aquatic ecosystems varies as a function of water depth and flow rate. In flowing water such as streams and rivers, various specialized detritivores are involved in the breakdown of plant litter imported from adjacent terrestrial ecosystems. In open water environments, dead organisms and other organic matter called particulate organic matter drift downward to the bottom. On its way, particulate organic matter is constantly being ingested, digested, and mineralized until much of the organic matter is in the form of humic compounds by the time it reaches the bottom sediments. Bacteria decompose organic matter on the bottom sediments using aerobic or anaerobic respiration depending on the supply of oxygen. Dissolved organic matter in the water column also provides a source of carbon for decomposers. The rate at which nutrients cycle through the ecosystem is directly related to the rates of primary productivity or nutrient uptake and decomposition nutrient release. Environmental factors that influence these two processes affect the rate at which nutrients cycle through the ecosystem. There is typically a vertical separation between the zones of primary production and decomposition. In terrestrial and shallow water ecosystems, plants function to bridge this gap. In open water ecosystems, there is a physical separation between these zones that limits nutrient availability in the surface waters. The thermocline functions to limit the movement of nutrients from the bottom zone to the surface waters. During the winter season, the thermocline breaks down, allowing for a mixing of the water column and the movement of nutrients into the surface waters. This seasonality of the thermocline and mixing of the water column controls seasonal patterns of productivity in these ecosystems. The internal cycling of nutrients follows the same general pathway as that discussed for terrestrial and open water ecosystems. The directional movement of water affects nutrient cycling in stream ecosystems resulting in nutrient spiraling. Nutrient spiraling is a process wherein the nutrients are continuously being transported downstream in a spiral fashion rather than a cycle. Flowing water involves a spatial element wherein nutrients in the water are continuously carried downstream. Water movement and speed determines how quickly the nutrients are carried and the physical and biological factors that hold the nutrients in place. Spiraling is measured as the distance required to complete one cycle. The longer the required distance, the more open the spiral. The shorter the distance, the tighter the spiral. Coastal ecosystem is one of the most productive environments. An estuary is a place where salt water mixes with fresh water. A semi-enclosed part of the coastal ocean where salt water is diluted by fresh water coming from the land. As these two waters meet, current velocity decreases and sediments are then deposited within a short distance called the sediment trap. Tidal subsidy is a process where the rise and fall of water depth with the tidal cycle flushes out salt and toxins from marshes and brings in nutrients from coastal waters. Vegetatives and salt marshes is broken down majorly by bacteria and fungi. 
the low oxygen content of sediment favors the anaerobic bacteria. The tidal cycle replaces the oxygen-depleted waters and sediments with oxygenated water. The pinocline, which functions similarly as the thermocline, is the zone of maximum vertical difference in density. Living and dead particles settle through the pinocline into the countercurrent, which is then carried to the estuary with their nutrient content. The global pattern of ocean surface currents influences patterns of surface water, temperature, productivity, and nutrient cycling. The Coriolis effect drives the patterns of surface currents. The movement of surface currents results in deeper, more nutrient-rich water that is transported vertically.